I relate so much to that, man. It hurts so much because he's he's right. So, um, this video showed up um about a day ago, and it's by Noble Plays, and it's Vanilla Swotor was the greatest MMO RPG ever. I've been wanting to watch it, but what really piqued my interest is when Star Wars Central took it and reposted it. So if if it's good enough to get his attention, then I guess I should probably take a look at it. Um, just to see if, you know, if, if I agree. I mean, because I was there on launch day, too. I was there in oncoming beta. If you guys have been in my stream, how many times have I talked about that? So I definitely want to see what this has to say. And since I can't do a live recording because my internet's wonky, I will just do a reaction to it here now and i'll post it up on youtube I mean, if you guys like this content don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button subscribe for more swotor and gaming content and um, i actually got a video coming up in um a little bit hopefully should be out next week it's another lore video because i've been really enjoying my lore videos but let's go ahead and get into this I was 14 years old when Star Wars The Older Public released. I was 19. I even bought the Ultimate Explorer Guide before I even Good bought job, the dude. game. I remember convincing my dad to let me spend $60 on the three disc installation set. Oh, and man, the harder yeah. part of that was even convincing him to pay for a subscription after that. Yeah. Soul Tour came at a time in my life where most teenagers were starting to feel lost. I felt like I didn't fit in with my friends at school or at church. But I always loved Star Wars, and when I found out that a new MMO for it was coming out, I seized the opportunity to find what I had been searching for. You know, like, I totally vibe with that because I just, in my situation, I had just graduated high school and I was playing Star Wars Galaxies, but uh, Galaxies wasn't really holding my attention that often. And when, I remember when the game was announced, uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, it was announced like in 2008 and me and my friends were instantly like on board with this game i've had my account since then i believe october 2008 or january 2008 i can't remember exactly but i i vibe with what he's saying i didn't really have like a i have like a lack of community but me and my friends were definitely like wanting to like bond with this game and it was actually kind of funny because I was an ongoing beta tester and I was one of my only friends that became, actually, no, I was the only one out of my friend group who became an ongoing beta tester. And I still hold it over their heads to today because I'm petty like that. Community. The first character I ever made was a bounty hunter due to the fact that it was the coolest class in the Explorer Guide. Witnessing the cinematic storytelling of Bioware combined with the ability to make my own character was so amazing, I can't really explain how great it felt to be a part of it. Yeah, it was day. probably a really Here good feeling. Here on what most people would call the piss-colored planet, I could <laughs> rise through yeah. the levels, becoming an honorable light side bounty hunter. Back then, there were were no level skips. You nope. had to walk to each taxi mm -hmm. and explore every quick travel point to unlock them. Yep. A concept that today's players would probably uninstall over. God, that's a vibe. Like, oh my god, new Swartor players have no idea how good they have it. You had to discover every taxi point, you had to discover every quick travel point, and at later leveling, oh my god, it was it it was even it was even more grindy, but it was sick. It was such a good feeling once you've got a groove. But all jokes aside, I loved that feature, or mm -hmm. lack of feature at the time, because yeah. it forced you, the player, to explore each planet and zone. Exactly. After about three hours of leveling, I was ready to make it to the Imperial Fleet and start my real journey in the greater galaxy. Mm -hmm. Back when Swotor heavily encouraged playing with others, running flashpoints required yes. the holy trinity of MMORPGs. Yeah, you needed tank, a group. healer, and DPS. Working together was key to progressing through parts of the game. Yes. And the rewards didn't just stop with cool gear. You were usually rewarded with finding new friends, which would lead mm -hmm. you to get a guild invite. The galaxy of Star Wars is so expansive. There were so many planets gigantic. to explore that I had grown up seeing in movies sick. or reading about in books or comics. I loved being immersed in each planet. I would complete every side quest because unlike most other MMOs, Tours questing was so good that you wouldn't mind staying on a planet longer just to complete all of the side quests. Like, no one understands how good Vanilla Sotor actually was. Vanilla Sotor 
was so incredibly good. That's why it really spiked in players when it first came out. I, the sad thing is, is I really believe this was the only game that came out that was that had the the potential to be the World of Warcraft killer because Star Wars, no matter what anyone says, Star Wars is a bigger property than Warcraft. It doesn't even compare. Yes, that and you needed the XP for it, actually. Mm -hmm. The wonder of SWOTOR was everything I could think about. I would finish school and hurry back to my room to log on and continue my bounty hunter story. Picking up gear uh, yeah. was rewarding, even though it didn't really do that much for you when you were low level. It was just awesome to collect various pieces and equip it just to see how it would look. One of the cooler things about Star Wars in 2012 was the open world PvP, which definitely had never did that, glory, but it added an extra. But I know exactly what he's talking about. And fear, as I would have to figure out what areas to sneak through to avoid a trooper-only guild doing patrols on Tatooine. Mm -hmm. This feature no longer exists due to player counts and oh, current yeah. game direction. You had this on every planet after level 25, so not only did you have a chance to kind of figure out what you were doing as a player, but then you had to spend the remaining 25 levels to fend for yourself. Yep. I leveled up with a few friends that got the game, and it was such a special experience. It each was of us so picked sick. Up skills so that we could make each other different things. I picked biochem, Derek made the weapons, and David made the gear. That was back when crafting had a purpose in SWOTOR instead of just conquest. I swear to God, like, there's so many features in this game that are just pointless now. Like, your ship is incredibly pointless. It used to be like your own personal hub. It used to have a, a use and it just doesn't anymore. Crafting used to just used to not just be this superfluous thing. You actually had a reason to craft because that was the way you got some really cool stuff. And oh my god, it's just so incredibly pointless now. I'll never forget one of the first guilds I ever joined. The Akatsuki, and it was there that I met one person who would play an important role in my life going forward. Hi Sarah, if you're watching this, I hope you're doing well. I don't remember that much about the guild outside oh, of God, meeting yeah. Sarah, but after that guild, there was the Unmasked Rebellion. And this is where I met a lot of friends I still have to this day. I'm bringing the social element up so early because this is what made SWOTOR for me it and was, many other guild players. Picture was the good sense in this of community, game. family, and friendship. Leveling characters didn't just take a weekend. It took weeks of consistent playing and yes! working together. The social aspects of Swordsman yes! were so meaningful in the early years, and I think that's been lost on so many people who still play. Mm -hmm. It took me about one month to get from level 1 to level 50, and while that might seem like an eternity in 2024 standards, it was actually the best part of the entire game. See, that's what a lot of the new players don't understand, is... Like, there was something, like, there's actually something that's been lost when it comes to Star Wars The Old Republic. Like, everyone thinks about it as a solo experience now. It, this, the class story was, but leveling was not a solo, or is not a solo experience. Everyone experiences flashpoints at a solo level now. Everyone, everyone experiences a lot of the group-centered content now as solo stuff. And that's because, like, Bioware at some point decided to switch it up. And it's so stupid because it's an MMORPG. You couldn't do, you could not play the game the way you do now in 2011. In 2012. You just couldn't. The whole point of MMOs wasn't to get to endgame and raid. It was to explore all areas of the world slowly and with a lot of other people. I never rushed to get to max level. See, like, in the, the, this is like the difference in experience because he definitely... I, I get everything he's saying because I didn't get into raiding until I started, believe it or not, until I started playing Destiny in like 2015. So I didn't, well, in 2014, I didn't start do my first raid until 2015. But I had no idea what raids were. So re really experiencing Star Wars The Old Republic was just like, you know, me doing group content like Flash and stuff like that. I didn't even know what a raid was. I didn't know what ops were. And a lot of people, a lot of people play MMOs just to get to endgame to do that. But Star Wars The Old Republic was very 
different. Even though I believe that one of the things that faltered Star Wars The Order Public was the fact that when it first came out, it didn't really have a lot of in-game, but they were cranking out in-game content pretty freaking quick. I was more focused on exploring the galaxy, deepening my connection to my character and the story that I was a part of. Mm -hmm. When I reached Bio the next level, that's it felt the like I really magic. did accomplish something. Every mob I AoE'd, every place I accidentally died in, every boss I ever conquered, it all led yeah. to this moment. Yeah. But it didn't stop there. This is where the MMO experience we all know and love comes in. End game Raids. content in yep. Tour was really fun for me. The hard mode flashpoints were actually hard, and it took real teamwork to beat bosses and other mechanics. I'm I'm gonna be a hundred and ten percent honest. I did not join my first ops group until 2014. Hold on, let me. God dang it, I can't do it. I'll put it in post. I can't, like, I, I found it, but I can't display right now, but I'll put it in post. But that is a character that I still have to today um, at level 55 um, do, doing my first ops group. And I was, and I was, we were fighting Dreadtooth. And I posted that in February, February 26th, 2014. Eight man operations were some of the coolest content available. They, they I really were. Staying up late just to clear story mode because even story mode back then had some hurdles. It did. Hey, good job. Oh snap, dude! Oh, I know you. I know you hold on to this footage because it's a good feeling when you go back and look at this footage. Don't even get me started on daily areas like Section X. Yep, and there, the we there we go. There we go. group to run dailies were great because you also yes! had to worry about the enemy faction killing you. In mm -hmm. this case, the Republic side, which we did a lot of. The gameplay loop of Vanilla Swotor was like no other. It I could was, have done it was the so same good loop for years, and I did just that until the first expansion came out. Rise of the Hut Cartel was my favorite expansion. Everyone in my guild was so excited mm -hmm. to start a brand new planet and level up to the new cap of 55 and unlock the new class abilities. It was around this time that I actually had started my first gaming YouTube channel. See, I know a lot of people who don't who didn't like Rise of the Heart Cartel, but I loved it. I loved Rise of the Heart Cartel. It was so good. Channel. Yes, this is how I recorded it, and these were good the job, legit dude. frames. I'm putting no. this gameplay in because while well, yes, it's hideous. It is hideous, no problem. At the time. It was all I had and it was all that I needed. I so, I used to play on a garbage laptop, my first laptop that I ever bought when I was, like, 18. And I bought it just for playing Star Wars The Old Republic. And just, and because my frames were so bad, I used to absolutely just, I used to, what is it? I used to Alt-Z just to disable... I used to Alt Z just to disable my UI so I would have enough frames to see around. So I had to memorize my rotation. So, dude, I feel you. I still was able to experience the game. Skip spamming. I am. This is amazing. That was <laughs> thrash. Damn it. I just used, uh, good, good job, dude. I even played ranked PvP like this back in the day, and I've got the titles to prove it. Good when I job. Got my own PC. Bro. Braver man than I am. I never did PvP because I sucked at it. But dude, sick. I would love to have the freaking bell. PC built, I was blown away by what normal graphics actually looked like. While I'm not going to give you a history of every expansion in the Old Republic, this was one of Swotor's high points, and I rode that high point straight into 3.0, Shadow of Revan. This probably was the, the game last peaked. time where I felt the same wonder and awe that I had been experiencing over the last few years. Shadow of Revan's were Star Wars The Old Republic peaked. After this, it was all downhill, straight up. Since Swotor's launch. I went over to a buddy's house and we set up our PCs right next to each other for the launch of Shadow of Revan. Shout out to you, James, if you're watching this. Sure, uh, the pirate theme of this expansion was not my favorite, but if no. you were going to tell me that it only got worse from there, I'd say you're lying. But it did. 
after mm-hmm. 3.0, Bioware started 4. to do 0. something that would forever change the way SWOTOR played. They started moving away from the standard MMO format and went a more solo player route. Which- I tell people all the time, this is what's really ruining the game. There's, there are two things that I tell people that are ruining the game all the time. It's the focus on the cartel market and the fact that this doesn't feel like an MMO anymore. It feels like an online single player RPG. And I hate that, that it feels so solo focused. It's not like, oh, it's a bunch of group content and then here's the solo section. It feels like, no, here's the solo section and the group content is down here. I hate it. Which on some level, I understand. But they started taking away key features that made the game stop relying on grouping with others. Yes. You could run through a lot of the main content solo. Obviously, the story content was always solo. You could have a friend join you if you really wanted to. He's so freaking based. Bioware stopped putting so out based. group content. They made it easier to play the game alone, which didn't yep. make any sense to me. No, if it doesn't make any sense. Player today, They will likely say that they enjoy playing the game alone anyway and never did any of the group content no group pvp or pve which i don't necessarily have an issue with different strokes for different folks absolutely it just highlights the truth about modern gaming nobody Mm -hmm. plays games together anymore whether it's a mixture of social anxiety or being more introverted like myself the community of swotor slowly began to fade away see i don't think it's the the modern gaming has lack of focus on playing together i don't think that's true because games like fortnite call of duty all of that and there are there are people who play solo but a lot of people are playing those games together Uh, it feels i feel like depending on the game you play it may feel like there's a there's less of a group focus but if star wars the order public were to go back to the way it was like in 2014 you would feel the exact opposite it's really just the focus of the devs they're not focusing on group content anymore they're treating it like a single player rpg and fade away fast many players including myself voiced concerns about the direction of mm-hmm. swotor this was back when i was a swotor only youtube channel but to really no avail swotor kept declining yep. i continued to make youtube videos covering the game mostly in the pvp realm but no matter how many videos i made I kept having this weird feeling that the I know end exactly was near the feeling my time in the game. I know I mm-hmm. skipped over expansions 4.0 through 7.0 because to be honest with you, all of those updates just brought more pain. Yep. Features Every single and one of them. Taken away. There was nothing in those updates that I could honestly say made a huge impact on me, at least in a positive way. The only positive thing as of recent and only reason i even say this is because of the possibility of what they might do in the future and what might be in development right now is the combat styles update in 7.0 that's the only thing and i even have problems with the way that's done like leaving it for only subscribers is the biggest middle finger to the player base i've ever seen and he is very right about this because every single update, it just seems like Swotor has lost more and more and more and more of its identity for, for the only reason, the only reason that, that I say that is because the only thing they're focusing on is more cartel market stuff and single player stuff and nothing for group content. Even the operations like like the the one thing that the PV the PVE community is asking for is nightmare modes and they we and they refuse to give it to them. And I don't even do nightmare modes. And I'm just like, come on, guys, this is what your player base is wanting. And you guys are just straight up ignoring them for the sake of just constantly doing this single player stuff. And you guys are forgetting that this is an MMO. It's an MMORPG. It's not a single player RPG. This isn't Guild Wars. This isn't the first Guild Wars. But that's what they're slowly turning it into, and that I seriously think is one of the things that's killing the game. For those of you who are new to my videos, I would quit and leave SWOTOR many times from 2015, really until the last 8 months. Some of that was chalked up to chasing the next gaming hype train or having other interests, but Mm -hmm. I would always come back to SWOTOR because it it was home to me. Bro, yes! Like, this that's what it is star wars you there's so many good memories in star wars the republic and i have i have uh friends who refuse to go back to the game because they seriously feel like the game is garbage now and 
I don't disagree with them, but there's something about Star Wars The Old Republic that feels so much like home. And it feels that way because, because like, at least for me, is because this was one of Star Wars The Old Republic was one of the things that only good things I really had in my life when, when um, around the time of like uh, 20, 2012 or so, like the tail end of 2012, and I really got into the game. So there's a point where there's definitely a point where it felt like home. And every single time you come back to Star Tour, you feel like you're coming home. But then the reality of it hits you. It's no longer the game you remember it as. It was in this Star Wars MMO that I found like-minded people who shared the same passion for Star Wars as yes, I did. It was exactly. where I met lifelong friends. It's where I learned a lot about life. I learned a lot about YouTube through collaborating with other Swotor content creators like Star Wars Central and Swotorista. But in this year of 2024, I said goodbye to content creation. Why, you might ask? Swotor isn't an MMO anymore, at least not one that gets the love Facts. and attention it deserves. BioWare Base. gave up on it and moved it to Broadsword, which, as we all know, is a retirement home for MMORPGs. I'd like to say that- See, I thought that moving it to Steam was moving it to a retirement home. Giving it to Broadsword is... It's like putting it on hospice. It really is. I'm sorry if that sounds like a downer, but if you aren't paying attention, if you don't it, like, if you don't see what's happening, you're not paying attention. It, it, Swotor is. I don't want to say it's going on life support because of uh, because there is a it's, broadsword has like Ultima Online, and that game's still getting um supported with updates and stuff like that. But Star Wars: The Old Republic is going it's basically yeah that's all it's going to be the only reason star wars Pub is going to be around is for the car is for the cartel market and because it brings in money but as soon as that stops get ready to say goodbye to this game and it sucks because we're never going to get another game like this ever again ever that this is the sole reason why I don't play the game that much anymore, but that would be too easy. I think SWOTOR started dying for me back in 5.0. The game was not about being an MMO, it's now about what most people call Space Barbie Simulator, and this angered me back in the day, but I realized that it's, it's true. true. The YouTubers who were talking about the decline of SWOTOR were right. And I just didn't want to believe it because of the rose-colored glasses. Exactly, and you love the game. Attachment that I had grown to it. These problems were not just exclusive to the content released aspect, but in general, Swotor mm -hmm. has lost its way. It's no longer a game for people like me. The only thing that the current development team seems to care about is making cartel market items to sell based off of whatever latest Disney Star Wars abomination is out there. Thank Swotor you. Swotor isn't about coming together and experiencing community through harder group. And see, the, uh, like, whether or not you like Disney Star Wars stuff, that's neither here nor there. The point is, a Star Wars The Old Republic was its own i was its its own little island star wars order public used to be this little this place that was outside all of that but now it's not so the game itself is like i talked about in my star wars outlaws my star wars outlaws video this game has lost its identity Star Wars The Old Republic is not what it used to be. And not in the not what it used to be in the rose-colored glasses kind of way. It has literally lost what it used to be. It didn't used to be the game that it used to be right now. Content and well-written story. It's become a nostalgia tomb for those looking for the last remnants of Bro. an old MMO gaming experience. Yes. Speaking of remnants of an old gaming experience, I was on Ilum a few months back for the last version of the Gree event. I was there when they first announced this PvP-like event. I was in Mumble with my friends, getting all hyped up for this great event that was going oh, to it was involve. An event? I didn't even notice. I remember finishing up my schoolwork, 
running downstairs and jumping on because I wanted to be involved with the next guild PvP Zerg that was happening at the pylon. It was so exciting because there were so many guilds who were trying to prove which was the best PvP guild on the server. You had to figure out how to dodge other players if you wanted to get your quest done, and there were some cool achievements in there as well. It was one of the coolest events, and I'm so grateful that I was able to experience it. When I went to this last version of the Gree event, I was just reminded about how different the game is now. I had to switch to the PvP instance mm -hmm. because for some reason I thought people would be there. But as I sped around with my quests ready to complete, I could not find a single soul. All oh, I can no. hear are the echoes of war from the guilds many years ago. The formation of alliances and newfound wars between guilds. It was a really unique and fun experience oh, to be a part dude. of back then. Everyone hangs out on the PvE instanced parts of planets nowadays because before they made the switch to Broadsword, Bioware shut down the PvP servers yes, and they made did. them optional instances. This essentially rendered the Gree event almost unplayable Legit. outside of the Zeno analysis. It was honestly so depressing. See, I was never into PvP, but I do think that PvP players deserve a spot in MMOs and stuff like that. So the fact that Bioware has completely abandoned the PvP community is not good because they've also abandoned the pv the pve community they've literally have starved the pvp and the pve community out of the game and i know there's still people who do pvp and do pv um, do pvp and then also do pve but it's nothing like what it was like 10 years ago it's nothing like it was 12 years ago it's it's so incredibly nuts to me that a game company can go so far in the opposite direction without realizing that they're handicapping themselves. They are like they literally killed off the people that have been paying them. That I just logged off the game. This is solely because the game no longer encourages world PvP, exactly. and they actively killed it over the last six years. This really put the nail in the coffin for me of the old Star Wars The Old Republic. Seeing my favorite event go from the highlight of the year around Christmas time to just another event with little to no players participating. There is a video I made almost a year ago mm -hmm. that's still up on my channel and I haven't taken it down because there's a little part of me that wants to be wrong about SOTOR. Some people say that I just Flip back and forth between liking the game and hating it, but that's definitely an oversimplification. It really I'm is sure an over oversimplification. Gathered. It if really is. If you never played the game, I would say that it is a must play through the vanilla game. After Shadow of Revan, though, you'll see it's fallen off a yeah. huge cliff. Not just in its storytelling that everyone knows it for, but in its overall lack of quality content. Mm -hmm. The community around Swotor is split. You have the people who only ever played it as a solo RPG, yeah. and then you have the MMO players who loved its story aspects, but left ultimately due to the lack of MMO based content. Exactly. I lied to myself for years years about the truth about Star Wars The Old Republic. My older content, even the videos eight months ago, will corroborate that. SWOTOR has meant so much to me. It truly was the reason I did not end up in the ground as a teenager. And for that reason alone, it was almost impossible for me to let the game go. Bro, I relate so much to that, man. I relate so much to what he said just now, man. And I really am holding back tears. Because without this game, I probably would have ended up in the ground too. It hurts so much because he's, he's right. 2014, 2015, I was, I was going through it. 2013 especially. Like, that entire time. And Star Wars The Old Republic gave me a friend that would always call me to play. He always would call me to play right when I felt like the end was the only option. And it really sucks to leave, to leave it behind. It's not the same game anymore, man. It's not.
only now, at age 27, can I look at this game of I'm Destiny. 32. It's no longer the game I fell in love with as a child. It isn't even the same game it was five years ago. My guild from almost 10 years ago got together for a little reunion back in April, and we have struggled oh, that's to keep so our nice. Friday night commitment to SWOTOR. Part yeah. of it is because the game has changed so much, and it's not what we used to love and enjoy anymore. It's so but real. That is to the extent in which I play the game now, occasionally with my old guild mates. I go there to talk with old friends and catch up with them. Now, some of you may be thinking that I am just way too emotionally invested. And no. That's true. But I think all of you. It. Listen. Anyone who tells you that is woefully out of touch with their own emotional state there anyone who tells you that doesn't understand how people relate to media because i guarantee anyone who tells you that will have a movie that makes them cry will have a song that makes them cry They'll have a memory of hanging out with people or a family member that makes them that makes them cry. There's no difference between the emotional connection you feel to Star Wars The Old Republic than the emotional connection you feel from those other things. People who think that you're getting too emotionally invested are out of touch crazy people. And if any one of them Dude, I, I, if, if, I swear to God, dude, I'd back you up. I'd be right there with you to be like, um, excuse me. Sorry, I'm sorry, do you not cry to music? It is okay to be emotionally attached to a game. Maybe not like overly, uh, you know, unhealthily emotionally attached, but to be attached to the memories that you made over the course of almost a decade, it's completely fine. And I, man, I back you up against anyone who said anyone else who said different. Of us have that one game where we are super emotionally invested into it, probably too much. And when you spend more time in a game than you've spent in the workforce so far in your life, you'll understand why I feel the way about this game. Yes, I have gotten older and found other interests outside yeah, of gaming. Me like too. Many of us have. But part of the gradual leaving of Sword Horror was that players like me were being pushed out. The Literally. biggest reason that I am able to start walking away from Soul Tour with a lot less guilt is that I was able to experience this game with my lovely wife. If you were to tell a 14-year-old oh, noble no. that he would spend 13 years of his life playing this game, and through all the ups and downs, he would be able to show someone who he cared about some of the greatest places and stories Bro, in gaming, that he would have called touches you crazy, my heart. getting to show her all the places I used to sit Oh my god, that touches my heart. I'm literally going through that with my wife right now because she's playing through Knights of the Old Republic. So I know exactly how he feels. And I uh, uh, I built my wife a PC just so we can experience two things together. Star Wars the Old Republic and Destiny. We have Knights of the Old Republic on my Xbox. But I feel this guy so much. Bro, like, man, you're you're hurt. You're you're getting you're getting to old washi while talking with friends, having her experience the secrets of the Star Cabal and the Dreadmasters, watching her excitement as she levels up crafting and plays through companion romances. That is a priceless gift that this game has given me. Now I want her to experience the Bounty Hunter story before we put the game down. The Bounty Hunter is where I started this journey 13 years ago, and that is where the journey will end when that time comes. So as I write this script and see speed across the plains of Voss, I am filled with nothing but gratitude and sorrow. I know this sounds painfully dramatic. No, not at all. I grew up with is so sobering, to say the least. Wandering through the old planets, visiting the same landmarks, and remembering all the times I would stay up 
leveling alts while talking in mumble about the next guild raid night, the oh late night God. grind and rank queues, all of the late nights that I would spend datacron hunting with Nox, and the hundreds of videos that I produced on my channel from the good old days, and just getting lost in a galaxy that brought so much comfort and joy to a lonely teenager that stuck with me no matter what. Such Thank you for everything, Soltor. If they ever made classic servers, I could see myself getting into it once again but I really don't think that will ever happen. My relationship with Star Wars The Old Republic is definitely complicated and messy to say the least. Absolutely. And not playing the game is definitely something that is hard for me to do sometimes, but I have finally understood the truth about myself and the game. I have been holding on to the past, wishing that I could go back to the good old days. Yeah. But those days are gone. And yep. there's a reason why they're called the good old days is because they happened, never to be repeated again. While I love reminiscing with my friends and talking about said good old days, we can never remake those experiences. Yep. And it would be and a it's shame rough. if we could. In the words of one of my longtime friends who plays the game, Bernji would say, it was the people that made the game so good, not the game itself. While I don't actually agree with that, I can understand the sentiment. The yeah. old Swotor was a phenomenal game, and it was made even more wonderful by the people who were playing it at the time. Both of those things combined made for one of the best gaming experiences I have ever had. Actually, the best gaming experience I have ever had. I will forever be grateful for my time playing Star Wars The Old Republic on a regular basis, but I have finally been able to accept the fact that it really isn't in my best interest to play it that much and definitely not make content on it, but I did want to make this video as a proper thank you and a proper goodbye to the game that really launched my YouTube channel and had such a profound impact on my life. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have made it to this far, I really appreciate you. If you related to any parts of this video at all, be sure to subscribe. I love making content like this where I talk about Man, games dude. that I've played slash play. And if you are looking to watch more today, you can check out my videos on why the concept of modern forever games isn't really that good. It's or not. how to enjoy video games again if you find yourself in a little bit of a rut. Thank you guys again so much for watching. My name is Noble. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Man. God. He's so freaking right, though. Game's not the same. And, you know, it's really... I mean, he said it all, man. He really did. And... I don't think I've ever been that close to crying from a YouTube video for for a while because and he here's the thing everyone I think everyone that's currently playing Sotor or even some people who have left Sotor need to signal boost this video this needs to get out there because it's the truth man I'm going to so I'm going to link this video down in the description guys man it's there's nothing really more I can add to it. But yeah, I'll link it down in the description, guys. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. If you guys watched for this long, remember, never trust a hut. Always save the blue Twi'leks. Retortion me. And may the force serve you well.